Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you very much for the interview. Uh, we just wanted to ask you like, a few questions about your newest product, Forte Enterprise. What would be the biggest difference between Forte Enterprise and your prior products? Oh, that's a great question. So um, uh, the Forte fleet, right, the Forte family of, of machines um, has 36 qubits. Mm -hmm. So that's in common between both Forte and Forte Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Um, Forte as a system, as you know, is designed to be like bleeding edge in terms of like compute capabilities. Mm -hmm. It has 36 qubits and it can basically execute 36 times 36 mini gates. Wow. That's the definition of like algorithmic qubit benchmarks. Mm -hmm. So it beats that benchmark, which is a very high bar. A Forte Enterprise will be able to do that same thing. It will have 36 algorithmic qubits. Mm -hmm. What's different is that the form factor of Forte Enterprise is designed so it fits in a data center. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a data center, it's important uh, to have like control that's easily doable in the current environments. Mm -hmm. And in particular, that means at room temperature. So the, the Forte system has uh, some parts are cryogenic. Most parts are actually room temperature, but some parts in the laser control are cryogenic. In the Forte Enterprise system, we engineered it in a different way so that the whole thing can run at room temperature. So it's directly rack mountable, you can put it in a, in a data center. We sold it recently to Quantum Basel, which is an outfit in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and they will get the first generation of this uh, Forte Enterprise rollout. So for customers who would yeah. be buying your Forte Enterprise, uh, what commercial advantages would they have by buying your product? Okay, great question. So um, my team at, at INQ is the so-called apps team. We were, we were developing the applications. So we work closely with customers like Hyundai and, and other large uh, institutions to figure out what you can actually do with the machines. So there are applications ranging from chemistry to optimization. Um, there's data analysis applications. You can do a new kind of data science with quantum computing, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And we have also applications that are more scientific in nature, like in high energy physics, uh, the applications, and also in generative AI, we, we see potential for applications. So that's a whole spectrum. Um, we look into many of those methods and map them then to devices like Forte. Right now, actually, there are jobs running internally where we prove out some of the cool new algorithms and run them. Wow. And, and then, then we, we generate value also for our customers like Hyundai, giving them access to the latest generation of the machine. Uh, can you introduce me to maybe like some specific examples, like what practical tasks yeah. I can Forte Enterprise could solve? Okay, great question. So um, the different let's let's pick one example. For instance, um, I like optimization because that's a first of all hard problem, and many people care about it in the industry, right? So the, um, in optimization, there are many different flavors of optimization problem. You got traveling salesman, you got like combinatorial problems, you got um, uh, scheduling problems, load balancing. Mm -hmm. We came across a family of problems that we find very interesting because they get hard very quickly. Even for 30 variables mm -hmm. in the input, they, turn, they, they, they get super difficult to solve if you're interested in the optimal solution or even close to the optimal solution. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they get hard so quickly is because they have a permutational character. So you look for a assignment between uh, like n objects and n locations mm -hmm. and you get n factorial combinations so if you were to try them all by brute force it's impossible yeah. and so uh, we were looking into a new algorithm um, called a uh, kite it, it stands for quantum imaginary time evolution mm -hmm. so this method seems to converge very fast and it seems to also find the optimal solution very often and it, the numerical studies look very very good so now, right now, we're trying that method out on the devices and try to see if it scales indeed to like 30 variables. If it does, it could be really big. Oh, okay. So that is one example of what we do. We also do the more traditional ways to do optimization. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cubo or Hobo, those are formulations of problems that are very common in the optimization, quantum optimization space. We looked at all of those as well. And we worked with some customers. For instance, with Airbus, we worked oh, yeah. on optimization problems, published a result. Um, we work with customers sometimes in the intersection between optimization and chemistry. Mm -hmm. So we have also a, a few examples there. We work with customers on chemistry with a Navy research lab, for instance. Mm -hmm. We're currently working on a project that studies corrosion 
That was presented at the APS uh, March meeting, the physics March meeting uh, earlier this year. So there's a lot of stuff we're doing right now with customers. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh yeah, about uh, your next product, uh, INQ Tempo. Yeah. Uh, your goal is to achieve 64 AQ, right? Yeah, that's uh, right. How, how's the research going on? So, so the Tempo system will have several new capabilities, dramatically different from what we have today, right? Today we have the chain, which gives you all-to-all -all connectivity. It's great. But now we need to scale to bigger sizes. So the idea is to go multi, multi-processor, multi-core, mm -hmm. right? So you have like w not just one chain, you have several chains and you can shuttle chains, bring them together and then operate on them jointly and then separate them again. So that's one capability. The other capability is kind of to be able to do um, operations and then measure and then to keep going. So those are capabilities that are super useful for uh, getting us ready for error correction in the long term. Mm -hmm. Um, but kind of we got to do something uh, in the meantime to, 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 to develop those capabilities. And so uh, Tempo will have that both. So it has the, has the, the multi-core and the mid-circuit measurements, scales into 64, mm -hmm. which is then beyond like a, a naive simulation. Like a simplified simulation just takes the state vector and simulates matrix vector, right? Mm -hmm. And e that, that very quickly is impossible, even for 45 uh, qubits, it is. You could maybe still do it on a supercomputer, but it's it's too slow. Mm. Forty-five, but there are better methods that exploit structure of the problem for some algorithms. So tensor networks is a method that's very common. It can be sometimes used to simulate even larger systems, oh. even even like eighty or so. But for if you don't know anything about the structure of the system, you can't do it anymore. So that's why we believe in the sixty-four. Um, because like algorithms that we look at, they don't seem to have a structure that can be exploited by tensor networks. Mm -hmm. We believe that definitely we're way beyond the point of no return for the classical methods. Oh. It will not be. The question is, and we are super um, uh, motivated and almost like obsessed by the question, is, is there a commercial use case? Mm -hmm. And so for 64, it's probably too small for a killer use case, something you can't do today. Right, but the industry wants it. For that, we need just slightly more. But wow. 64 is already like we can demonstrate the idea works. Mm -hmm. I think personally, around like 100 to 120. Mm -hmm. Once we get there, we can map problems to it that that the industry cares about, oh. like in optimization or in chemistry, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, in chemistry, it's all a question about how many uh, orbitals you have in your molecule, mm -hmm. right? And if you have 50 or so orbitals, that's where the classical methods are not good anymore. Oh, okay. it's, you have to double it to get the number of qubits, so 100 qubits. But if we had 100 qubits, we can solve really, really interesting problems. So we, either with Tempo or just shortly after Tempo with the next version, we have like commercial crossover point, not just a supremacy crossover point. Mm -hmm. We have like commercial uh, advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, that should happen within the next one to two years. So it's very exciting. Uh, this would be our last question. Uh, yeah. So uh, you told me that you would start delivering IQ uh, Forte, Forte Enterprise from Q4 this year. Right. Uh, how much uh, revenue increase do you expect from that? Uh, okay, I'm not a finance guy, so I can't talk about the finance. Uh, I can tell you this, though, we had uh, just an earnings call a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and raised our guidance for the rest of the year from 75 million to 95 million. That gives you an idea that we're confident in our strategy roadmap and also our booking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so, uh, yeah, so I joined uh, INQ about four months ago now, in, mm -hmm. in early March. I was with Microsoft for over 10 and a half years. So I'm, I still have good relationship with everyone at Microsoft. Um, and I, I worked on super exciting stuff, super exciting teams. I, I think Microsoft is a great company all in quantum. Mm -hmm. um, what excited me about INQ are a couple of things. First, I know Jung Sang for many, many years. No, like, I, we just met him. And took oh, a cool, him. cool. Yeah, I know him since at least like 2015 or 2016. Mm -hmm. And Chris Monroe, same thing. I know them both. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked on papers back then. My first paper with them was on uh, comparing 
an, a system back then there was no INQ yet that like in this form right so they had the UMD group in Maryland uh, had a five qubit system and there was the IBM system and I developed some benchmarks uh, there's a whole bunch of like small scale algorithms that I ran on the IBM system and then mm -hmm. uh, the team at UMD ran it on there and then we compared so that was our first collaboration mm -hmm. and later we had a bunch more so I really like uh, him and also the people he worked with but more importantly I feel like the uh, the iron traps that INQ is building they're now almost at the commercial crossover point oh, almost yeah. right almost. and I don't want to join once that happened I want to join uh, be part of that mission where we kind of prove it out and I help with all the knowledge I have in like algorithms right and I know some of the pitfalls in algorithms what other problems that are too hard right so I want to bring that in, in into INQ I felt like this is the right moment I had a super stable job at Microsoft I could have just stayed there and mm -hmm. and work with many customers I worked on quantum elements and Azure quantum mm -hmm. uh, that was exciting as well but I felt like even more excited about INQ And I know also Peter Chapman, the CEO, and, and the, the team there, the applications team is just awesome. Such a great group of, of, of folks. It's just amazing. I just like it there. Okay. So they haven't regretted a, a single day to work there. But. Okay, so the commercial crossover. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it too. Yeah, me too. Um, it, that's kind of our quest really, right? So figuring out the commercial crossover and working with the right customers to prove it out. So that, that's what we do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Anytime. Money Never Sleep newsletter와 네이버 프리미엄 콘텐츠 지금 바로 구독해 보세요.